It's a special day at the historic Big Apple event house in Columbia. A buffet spread has been laid out for customers. Scott Hall and his team do this just occasionally. It's a little more traditional um, than the stuff that comes out of the truck. So this is a temporary setup, and the announcement has already been made that this will be the final such offering for a while. And um, already the angry tweets and, and Facebook posts have started pouring in, so uh, sorry about that. The dishes served on this day are traditional, but most are prepared in an untraditional manner. The flavors are different. How many people never liked collards when they were young? I grew up eating collards and, and I hated them. Um, they were always terrible. While these only resembled the collards of old. We used sriracha and uh, you know brown sugar and a little molasses and um, a, a lot of herbs and, and we, we've had a lot of conversions of people who don't like collards. The story is the same for all the items on the buffet. They are dressed up, tastier versions of the originals. Scott Hall is satisfied with all of the dishes, but he reserves his highest praise for the pork barbecue. We sell the best barbecue in the state, maybe in both states. We brine it um, for 24 hours in um, you know, brown sugar, salt, and bourbon and uh, then we rub it for 24 hours, and uh, then we smoke it for 14 hours. Scott has brought confidence and swagger and new taste to the food scene in Columbia. Jonathan Sharp is a food column contributor for Free Times Magazine. It's a, a new way of looking at something that we're all very familiar with in the South. Members of the public seem willing to expand their palates. It was excellent. I would definitely come back. The man responsible for this grew up in the Carolinas, went off to New York, worked in a few restaurants, and learned some skills. There were trips back home. Far too often, and especially nowadays, especially with a lot of these you know, big chain barbecue places, there, there was just kind of a lot of disappointment that I would experience when I would eat that. At the same time, Scott was witness to the food truck revolution taking place in New York and elsewhere. I love the whole idea of um, sort of the way that street food was really revitalizing uh, American cooking and American cuisine. And I love that juxtaposition of the, the casualness of, you know, it's street food, you know, it's a, a side of a window opens up on a truck and like this amazing food starts coming out. Taking everything into consideration, Scott decided to move back to Columbia and bring the food truck concept with him. Trouble was, it took the city some time before deciding whether the trucks would be allowed. It was looking kind of, kind of scary for a while. And that's a heck of an investment out there. Out there. Uh, so it's, it's good that we, we got to keep doing this. Ultimately, trucks were given the right to operate and Bonin Artisan Barbecue on Wheels was in business. Can I have the pulled pork sure. on the side with the mustard? Can you put the mustard sauce on the side, please? Mm -hmm. Such a hip and new and now sort of thing, this, this whole food truck and, and casual food revolution. The population seems to really be hungry for something that's local, something that's had, had some you know, thought and care put into it. Others followed Scott's lead, and the food truck business is growing in Colombia. It's a good thing. It, it uh, uh, is yet another way to enjoy uh, original food in Colombia. The food trucks have just started popping up, and you know it, it does give Colombia something unique and different to it. This is Scott's office then, for the most part. Some food is prepared in the kitchen at the Big Apple, but the rest happens in the truck. It pulls up to various locations around town, the side window opens, and people show up. It's like getting to open up a new restaurant every day, you know, and, and that really charms me. We have a very uh, uh, loyal fan base, and, and you know, we, we try to change our menu you know, at least weekly, and um, that's part of the fun, I think, of, of coming to the truck and to see what, what we've got going on that week. There is no traditional advertising, so that fan base is reached entirely through social media, Facebook and Twitter. Everyone's, you know, leaving their two cents or, or talking about how, you know, what they enjoyed or what they didn't enjoy from the truck. Um, and, and I think it's, it's a really neat way to get, that, to get that information out. There are a few regular stops for the truck during the week, while on other days, there's no telling where it will pop up. Scott says he gets a handful of calls each week from businesses wanting him to park at their place. There's tons of merchants who are excited about, you know, this trend as well. And it's also mutually beneficial if we're in a, a merchant's parking lot. It draws attention to their business. It's good for both of us. There's almost a whimsical nature to the business and the food served out of the truck. The idea is to make the dining experience fun. We definitely sort of 
take risks that I think um, a lot of brick and mortar restaurants wouldn't, wouldn't do necessarily. These trucks, a lot of them are putting out very interesting creative food uh, that I think challenges all restaurants uh, to up their game. Scott's idea is to one day open a brick and mortar restaurant. The food truck is just the first piece of a larger plan. I love the truck, um, but I see it like as, as a different, just a different facet of, of the brand that I hope to, to be putting together. It's possible that those buffet lunches at the Big Apple could be seen as a trial run to see what the market is for a sit-down place. Strictly off the record, yeah, I think it was. <laughs> Even if there is a brick-and-mortar restaurant in Bone-In Artisan Barbecue's future, though, Scott has no intention of permanently parking the truck. I want the truck to be a, a, a staple in, in the Columbia food scene.